goals. Now I would like to talk about your effective filter. How is your effective filter doing today? Now, it might sound as if I'm asking something about your air conditioning, but no, or your car. It's your effective filter has to do with your mental state and how you feel emotionally so that you can do whatever it is that you need to do. Anything, whether it's going to school, whether it's cleaning your house, whether it's tidying up your room, whether it's reading a novel, whether it's writing a novel. You get my drift? So you need um, your effective filter. When it's low, it means that you are open and ready to do your activity. When your effective filter is high, you may feel stressed out with anxiety and you don't want to do it. You know, you, you just don't feel like learning anything. I don't feel like reading that book today. My effective filter is very high. You know, I think Ludwig van Beethoven had his effective filter high most of the time. But still, he was able to create this incredible emotional music. That's the Fifth Symphony. The Fifth Symphony, the Fifth Symphony, or Symphony Number no. Five. Symphony number five. Maybe do it. Maybe not. I'm just kidding. Maybe he was a happy man. No, from the readings, he wasn't that happy, but he was able to create very powerful and emotional music. So, still, so we want our effective filter to be low so that you are calm and you are ready to learn. It's kind of associated to Edward Thorndike's law of learning, one of his laws of learning, which is readiness. You want to be prepared and mentally open and prepared to do whatever activity it is that you're going to do. If your effective filter is high, you might feel too stressed out, right? So we want to keep it low. This is especially true when you're learning a language. When you are learning a language, whether it's um, English, Spanish, French, Italian, Japanese, Chinese, German, okay, whatever the language, you um, need to really have your effective filter low. This is according to Stephen Krashen. Stephen Krashen. And he coined this term, effective filter, in the 1970s when there were um, students coming in from different countries to the United States and they needed to learn a new language and acquire these essential skills to develop their communication fluency skills. And he noticed, you know, when the student feels very stressed out and fearful, he or she may not be mentally prepared to acquire um, the essential elements needed to produce uh, verbal fluency skills. As opposed to when you have a low effective filter, yes, you are able to receive that and apply whatever it is that you're learning. So, effective filter and Stephen Crash. The effective filter, the effective filter developed by Stephen, Stephen Crashen. Stephen Crashen, remember that name. Effective filter is low, you're happy to learn. Effective filter is low, you're happy to learn. The effective filter, the effective filter developed by Stephen, Stephen Crashen. Developed by Stephen, Stephen Crashen. One more time. The effective filter.
composer that we focused on? Ludwig van Beethoven from Germany. I still think that his effective filter was kind of high every day. But he was able to create really a, um, astounding, spectacular music. Like the Fifth Symphony. Symphony number five, symphony number five. The Fifth Symphony, the Fifth Symphony. We hope you like this lesson and hope to see you next time. How's your effective filter doing now? <laughs>